welcome along to the channel today. It is absolutely freezing. I'm uh, starting off on the South Downs. And uh, yeah, I'll find some shelter and tell you more. Today I am out uh, with my 045 again. I have got um, a load of film holders loaded with the Harman Direct Positive Paper and a load more with the uh, Femipan 100. And the idea today is to compare them side by side, more uh, the, the difference between uh, the look of the positive paper and the look of uh, uh, film. And, uh, if you watched my last video, it was kind of a bit of a, a tester to see uh, what the look of the paper was. Uh, it's got a very uh, unique look, it's much more contrasty than what I thought. Apparently it's worse than normal uh, negative papers. Um, I had a lot of uh, advice from uh, in a few comments, so huge thanks to them people who have um, taken the time previously to go through uh, the papers and experiment with them um, which will hopefully help me out a little bit um, but it has a unique look and uh, which isn't a bad thing uh, all film has a unique look and you shoot different films for different things so I kind of want to find stuff today which will suit that look of the uh, direct positive paper and also I'm going to shoot the same image the Family Pan 100 and compare them side by side. I figure this will be useful for people who are starting out, particularly in pinhole photography, um, because lots of people go down the paper route. It's very much marketed at pinhole photographers as well. And so it will give you an idea of what they look like, really, what you'll get with film, what you'll get with uh, the um, positive paper. In a minute, just see what we can find this morning. And, uh, Hopefully get some nice photos. So I'm stopping off first at my favourite tree. I've shot this several times before. Um, freezing up here. Uh, so I'm going to do two shots, same position, one with the film one with the positive paper I think I've got them in the right order um, so we'll compare them um, so for the paper I take a metered reading with an f-stopper for 180 and ISO of 3 and the foam pan is with an ISO of 100 so I'll do that um, I'm trying to keep this as quick as possible because I've got my old dog with me and he's taking shelter behind my bag and he's he's not enjoying it listen um, so yeah quickly crack on and get out of it. So with a 3 ISO I get a 60 second exposure, put that to 100 and I get a 1.6 second so I'll probably round that up to about 2. So that's a 60 second exposure on the paper two second exposure with the uh, film. So I'll get this set up. Not just a bag, but a wind guard as well. Over to the foam 
pan and that is a two second exposure. I'm trying to keep my shadow out of the picture. over there and see what we can find and hopefully get a nice uh, some nice photos I think that will suit the uh, paper quite well I've done one uh, last video at the church and it weren't the best photo but the certain uh, the look I think will suit that sort of thing graveyards and old churches and stuff so give it a go head there and try so I've got my first shot set up here. I've switched up to the uh, 75 mil, so that's an uh, aperture of about 220. Uh, I've got these three greys just in the foreground here, which are not currently being nicely lit by the sun. So I'm hoping they'll pop out quite nicely in that. Um, hopefully should have the, should have the whole church in that quite nicely. Uh, with the paper for this, I've got an exposure of two minutes. The foam of pan 100 out of a metered reading of four seconds, which add in the responsive failure is 20 seconds. So, a two minute exposure, 20 second exposure. We'll shoot them and see. Okay, so what went wrong here? So this shot and my next shot uh, both got exposed on the same sheet of film, uh, creating a double exposure. I kind of expected something to go wrong somewhere along the lines on this shoot because I had film holders kind of all over the place and I wasn't too organised with it. So this was the one that went wrong and it was a, a two for one, but never mind. So for my next couple of shots here, I've uh, just moved a little bit further over and I've uh, got this grave here, which is simply Mark washed ashore. Uh, from what I'm aware, it was someone who was washed up locally many years back and never identified or claimed, so they were buried here. But it's quite a nice, quite a nice grave. Uh, 
to see a pinhole image I think uh, hopefully still with the church up there in the background um, so yeah again we've got a two minute exposure of the paper 20 seconds of the film and um, yeah we'll see how they come out Right, so that's them photos finished just there. Going to find uh, one more la last uh, location this morning and uh, see what uh, other two photos we can get. Now I'm currently sitting up uh, to Beachy Head here. I might just try a quick photo um, looking over. Um, I was going to try one looking at towards the uh, Bell Toot Lighthouse which is just behind me. I got one several years back using uh, some negative paper and it's always been a photo which I felt with paper worked really well. I'll show it to you here. Um, I've tried shooting it several times uh, with pinhole on film and it just never seems to look quite the same as that one. Uh, so I was going to try and reshoot it. Um, but part of the problem is uh, the position where I got that photo from that that section of cliff has actually all com completely fallen away now so um, I'm not going to go up there um, a lot of it's all been uh, blocked off uh, particularly this time of year as well when you get the freezing freezing nights the warp moisture which gets into the the chalky cliffs and freezes throughout the night and, and lots of it um, ends up falling away but I know there's a spot just up here which is um, pretty safe um, for a view looking and getting some of the cliff I think it will see the lighthouse as well um, it might not pick up so well on the pinhole uh, so I'm gonna quickly go try that I'll see what it looks like first and um, get a couple of shots there so with um, these photos I actually metered the paper at an ISO 5 to try and hopefully hold on to the highlights of the uh, sun on the cliff face a little bit. Uh, so I had a 45 second exposure for that. And then with the uh, Foma pan, I had a six second exposure. So for my last photo, I'm just stopping here quickly at this uh, windmill. I'm going to shoot this on the uh, super wide setting on the 045. Uh, I did demonstrate in my last video how bad that is with paper. But I thought today comparing it directly to some film to see the, the difference would be quite interesting. So I've just popped out and got a metered reading again for the paper. I've got 15 second exposure for the film a uh, one second exposure like i said the paper image will be pretty much unusable but to see the difference will be quite interesting then after this i'll head back i'll get them all developed i'll talk a little bit through that i know i've probably shared all the photos already but i'll uh, talk a little bit about the difference in developing these two uh, the paper and the film separately and uh, yeah hopefully they've all, all come out good
So when it comes to developing with the paper and the film, uh, with the paper you need uh, three watertight trays like these film developing trays. You need a darkened room uh, with a red safe light. Uh, handling the paper in red uh, with a red safe light makes life a lot easier. And you uh, remove your exposed sheet of paper and place into your developer. In there it will sit for around uh, three minutes uh, before you see the image appear. And then when you're finished developing, you move over into a stop bath. This only needs around 10 seconds or so. And then from there, over into the fixer for around one minute. Then you give it a final wash. Uh, Ilford recommend around a 60 minute. I was a bit concerned at this at first, but uh, given some advice in the comments last video, it was said to allow it to soak in the tray for around 20 minutes, dump the water, put some fresh water in for another 20 minutes and then another load for the last 20 minutes. Looking on uh, Ilford's website you can find the technical data sheet which will give you the choice of uh, developers it recommends, the stop bath and the fixer, it will give you the dilution ratios that you need, uh, the temperature which it's best to develop it at and the times needed for each developer the stop and the fixer and then the wash. So with developing the film I use a Mod 54 holder and now this has to be loaded in complete darkness. Uh, so you need a bit of practice before you do it for the first time. So once you've got all your sheets of film onto the holder you then place it into your development tank, you put the lid on and then you can switch the lights on and start developing. Uh, you first pour in a developer, you develop it for as long as it is recommended depending on the type of film. You would then give it a stop bath and then a fix. And then when you have done that, you give it a rinse. I normally give mine around five minutes, but different films might recommend different things. And then once you've done this process, you hang it all out to dry ready for whether you're going to scan it, enlarge it, contact printing or anything else. Anyway that is all and thank you very much for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Uh, any questions please put them in the comments below and uh, again thanks for all the support from everyone recently. I really do appreciate it and thank you for all the comments in the past. It's been really helpful as I'm um, trying all these new things and uh, I'll see you next time I'm out. Thanks for watching.